So the number one complaint of social work students, particularly in master's programs, is that they feel constantly overwhelmed. A lot of people aren't just doing schoolwork, they're doing also, of course, field placements, they have families to attend to, or they're also working jobs. All of these commitments combined put us at risk of professional burnout and compassion fatigue. So here are 11 tips I believe can help you survive social work school. Tip number one is prioritize using the one, two, three, four method. So number one is do first. Anything we need to get done as a priority, we do it. Number two is to schedule. Anything that can wait or can be done later, put it in your calendar and revisit later. Number three is to delegate. Anything that is someone else's responsibility to do or someone else can assist you with, pass it on to them. And number four is don't do. Things that aren't a priority, things that won't assist you with your professional development, put it to the side and forget about it. Number two is to be okay with strategic no's. So being in social work school, you'll get invites to a lot of free events, uh, talks, seminars, whatever it is. You need to look very closely at these and assess whether these will help you achieve your professional or personal development goals. And if they won't, say no. There is no way humanly possible that you can attend all of these events. So pick the ones that you know you will benefit from and go to those. Everything else, put to the side. Tip number three, calendarize. Everything you put in category number two, schedule, add it to your calendar on your smartphone. If you're using Google Calendar or Apple iCloud Calendar, these will also sync with your computer. When you add things to your calendar, make sure to add email notifications and or instant notifications to make sure you don't miss any deadlines. Try to be realistic when you're estimating how long it'll take you to complete a task. A lot of assignments require pre-work, meaning uh, literature reviews, research, outline writing. It helps if you break everything into baby steps and set mini deadlines for each of these steps along the way. So number four is to reward yourself. A lot of tasks actually have rewards built into them. So for example, we'll feel satisfaction because we finish an assignment. But sometimes it helps to actually give yourself some kind of reward, either going and buying yourself a coffee, taking a walk around the block, or just spending the rest of the afternoon in the park. I think of social work school as not a race, but a marathon. And if you wanna keep on with it, you need to boost your motivation and extrinsic rewards are a really great way to do that. Tip number five is to maintain boundaries. Now in a professional context, what does this mean? It means not bringing work home with you, penciling in time in your calendar for rest and rejuvenation. So setting a time frame in which to answer all emails, texts, phone calls from work or your field placement. Having clear boundaries is one of the most important ways we protect ourselves against burnout. Tip number six is self-advocate. If you need to learn something, approach a lecturer. If you need additional training, speak to your field instructor. Be responsible for your own professional development and achieving your own goals. Also, be willing to pick your battles. Recognize when what you've asked for might not be forthcoming and move on. Tip number seven is to manage up. So being in a field placement, you're often working with a field instructor who's being pulled every which way with other commitments and duties. That may mean your supervision is canceled, they may flake on you, they may not respond to your emails. So when this happens, don't be demoralized. Just take initiative, reach out to them, send emails detailing everything you're gonna be doing, give them a phone call if you need to, and if you still don't hear back from them, it's worth contacting your field liaison to let them know what the situation is. Keep a log of all your activities or your communications and interactions with staff members just to make sure you're covered and that you're holding up your end of the deal. Tip eight is to live and breathe win-win. Champion everyone's interests. Disagree without being disagreeable. Work towards finding common solutions. Collaborate. We all know what it's like to work with difficult people. Don't be that person. The people you meet during your educational journey, you may end up running into down the line. So it's best to build bridges rather than burn them. Tip number nine, elevate your classmates. Everyone is struggling to survive school. Be unconditional in your support of them. Build community and relationships by performing acts of service. 
Celebrate other people's wins. Praise them. Again, there may come a time when you need to call in a favor, and it always helps to have those extra brownie points. Tip number 10 is to raise your voice. Now, speaking out in class is a risk. When you speak up, you are opening yourself to attack or criticism, but it's also an act of courage that other people are likely to honor. When you speak up, you empower other people to do so as well. Remember, confidence isn't a skill we're born with, it's something we practice. Now's as good a time as any to start. And finally, tip number 11, be a proactive learner. If there's something you need to learn, do everything in your power to find that knowledge. You can approach faculty members, you can Google, you can pay for additional trainings outside of school. If you think you'd benefit from mentorship, build a relationship with a lecturer at your school. Social work school is a very challenging experience, but it can also be very rewarding as well. I believe whatever you put into it will pay dividends down the line. If you can nail these best practices and build good habits, you have laid the groundwork for a very successful and fulfilling social work career. If you enjoyed this video, check out my blog post or any of the other links listed below. And please remember to like, hit the bell icon, and subscribe.